This is the story of Seo Jun, where he grew stronger by farming and evolving his pets by giving them his special juice, making them thick. Oh, I mean, thick. What the? In the previous episode, we saw how after drinking Seo Jun's special juice, the queen bee became pregnant and gave Seo Jun her cocoon. And because of the fight between Theo and the baby bear, the mommy bear came angrily, giving Theo a death stare. Theo, looking like he might pee himself at any moment, nervously greeted the mommy bear. He introduced himself as Theo, a wandering merchant. With a shaky voice, he showed his wandering merchant badge, hoping that upon seeing it, the mother bear might spare him. He continued, still with his shaky voice, explaining that he believed there had been a small misunderstanding with the baby bear. However, in response, the mommy bear growled loudly, and a powerful gust of wind nearly knocked Theo off his feet, leaving him barely standing in front of the mommy bear. As the bear's growls stopped, Theo found himself on his knees. Seo Jun and the other rabbits stood beside Theo, holding their ears, still affected by the bear's roar. Theo had tears in his eyes, crying in fear as he sincerely apologized. He promised that he and her baby bear would not fight anymore, and he is truly very sorry. Now seeing the situation getting out of control, Seo Jun stepped in between and tried to calm things down. He explained that it was just a little argument and nothing serious had happened. Her baby wasn't hurt. It was just a harmless little fight. Theo, still trembling with fear, remained on the ground. Hearing Seo Jun's explanation, the mama bear stared at him for a while with a deadly looks. Then, she let out a heavy breath and turned to move back into the jungle. Seo Jun and Theo, still scared and in a state of panic, watched her go. As the bear left, Seo Jun let out a sigh of relief. He admitted that he thought they were in real danger today. The white rabbits huddled together for comfort. While Theo was still crying, his sobs interrupted by hiccups. Seeing Theo in this state, Seo Jun adopted a caring tone. He held Theo and asked if he was all right, urging him to calm down as the mama bear had left. Theo slowly wiped his tears and managed to say thank you to Seo Jun, his hiccups persisting like a little child. Then Seo Jun gently held Theo and placed him on his lap, cradling him like a baby. He apologized sincerely, expressing regret that if he had informed Theo about the mama bear, this whole frightening situation might have been avoided. But Theo was still crying, his sobs punctuated by continuous hiccups, and he covered his eyes with his paws. The other rabbits sat beside Theo, watching him with sad expressions. To comfort Theo, the warrior rabbit began to lick him gently. For a moment, Theo stopped crying, surprised by the unexpected comfort. Then the other rabbits joined in, licking and tickling Theo. Slowly, Theo's sobs subsided, and he finally stopped crying as the tickling made him giggle. From a distance, the baby bear watched as all the rabbits licked and tickled Theo, making him laugh loudly. It was clear that they were all having a wonderful time. However, as the baby bear observed this joyful scene, he suddenly felt a wave of sadness wash over him. He lowered his head, his eyes filled with gloom. Unable to bear seeing Theo so sad, the baby bear approached Seo Jun and with gentle care started licking Theo as well. It was his way of apologizing for calling his mama earlier, which had frightened Theo. Theo, now smiling a little, told the baby bear that he was also sorry and that they could be good friends from now on. Seo Jun and the rabbits watched this heartwarming moment with happiness. However, Theo politely asked the baby bear not to eat his treat, explaining that it was very hard to find it, and the baby bear agreed, understanding the importance of Theo's treat. After a while, as everyone calmed down, Seo Jun spoke up. He said that they were all like a happy big family. As he said this, the rabbits started yawning and were sitting on Seo Jun's lap and shoulder. Theo rested in Seo Jun's hand, and Seo Jun himself sat comfortably on the baby bear's lap. Together, they all yawned, feeling sleepy as they slowly closed their eyes, ready to embrace a peaceful rest. But, due to the commotions, the rabbit couple emerged from their cave. Then, the husband rabbit noticed the straw hat that Theo had brought for Seo Jun from the lottery shop on the ground. He picked it up happily from Theo's pouch, and the mother rabbit pointed her fingers towards Seo Jun. As they observed, they saw Seo Jun and his companions sleeping like newborn babies. Seo Jun was resting against the baby bear while Theo lay in Seo Jun's lap. The warrior rabbit perched on Seo Jun's shoulder, and the other white rabbit found a cozy spot on the baby bear's stomach. Then, the mother rabbit said something to the husband rabbit, and he gently placed the straw hat on Seo Jun's head. The hat shielded Seo Jun's face from the direct sunlight, and as he slept with the hat covering his face, a warm smile graced his lips. Well, seeing this... I myself want to sleep between them. The scene shifts to a different dimension, a galaxy-like expanse with a hovering palace emanating brilliant light. As we draw closer, 
we witness four enormous black dragons encircling a crystal, radiating intense light with lightning bolts flickering around it. There is also a human-like figure close to the crystal. Upon closer inspection, we discern the identity of this being. It was Kaiser Fratani, the grandfather of our tower manager. He appears to be struggling to manipulate the crystal, but suddenly, the crystal's power spirals out of control. In frustration, he shouts, questioning why the portal to the tower is not opening. Then from behind, a calming voice speaks out, urging Kaiser to calm down. It was Anton Fratani, the tower manager's father. But Kaiser didn't calm down. Instead, he raised his voice even more. He expressed his frustration about not being able to see his granddaughter, Aileen, who happens to be the tower manager. In this dire situation, he found it impossible to remain calm. He explained that Aileen was unwell, suffering from regular seizures, and her condition had worsened significantly lately. To find a cure, they had journeyed to other dimensions and galaxies. Finally, they had found a cure, but now they were unable to open the portal back to the tower. Kaiser gazed at the crystal, stating that their only option to return to the tower now was to rely on the emergency system they had installed in the tower. This system could forcefully trigger the portal to open. Until that happened, they were stranded here, anxiously unaware of what was happening to Aileen. Then, Anton replied with a serious expression, explaining that the emergency portal would only trigger when Aileen suffered a seizure. He reassured Kaiser that this was good news, indicating that Aileen was currently okay. He urged Kaiser once more to calm down, assuring him that they would surely find another way to enter the tower. The huge black dragons who had been listening also chimed in. They expressed their understanding of Kaiser's feelings, and Anton continued, elaborating on their concerns for Aileen. He explained that the 99th floor of the tower, where Aileen's cabin was located, was the center of the tower. It had an incredibly dense concentration of mana, and the dragons took turns managing the tower from there, growing stronger in the process. But they had all chosen to give that cabin to Aileen alone, as the dense mana would help Aileen now... All the dragons were gathered here for Aileen's sake to fix Aileen's broken dragon's heart. In response to this heartfelt speech, Kaiser, still annoyed, remarked that even though the dragons had strong feelings for Aileen, the reality was that they were stuck in this dimension, unable to do anything about it. Maintaining his serious expression, Anton replied that he understood what Kaiser wanted to say. He addressed Kaiser as father and emphasized that he believed in his daughter Aileen more than anyone else. Then for the first time, a hint of sadness crossed Anton's face. He knew Aileen was a strong girl and was confident that she was bravely fighting her seizures. Kaiser, listening with a serious expression, responded that if Anton said he would calm down. He then ordered the huge dragons to patrol the area and guard the crystal until the portal opened. The massive black dragons took flight. Now, looking upward, Anton asked Kaiser if something good might have happened to Aileen since it had already passed the expected date for her seizures. They both gazed at the crystal, expressing hope for Aileen's well-being. However, Kaiser couldn't help but worry about whether Aileen was getting enough to eat on the 99th floor, given the limited food available there. Meanwhile, Aileen, our tower manager, was savoring the juicy cherries provided by Seo Jun. She sat comfortably on a couch with a book in hand, enjoying the moment. Next to her, a bucket made from onion leaves was filled to the brim with cherry tomatoes. With a mischievous smile, the tower manager held up a cherry tomato and commented on its taste. She wondered if the tomato had become even tastier due to its rank increasing from E to D. Before, she needed to fill her mouth with a bunch of cherry tomatoes to experience their sweetness. But now, only a few of them were enough to satisfy her palate. However, as she mused about the tomatoes, an unexpected shock coursed through her. Startled, she dropped the cherry tomato she had been about to eat, a look of surprise on her face. Then, with a curious look on her face, she gently touched her chest. In a hushed tone, she revealed that her dragon heart had never once beaten since the day of her birth. Yet, just moments ago, something incredible had occurred. Her heart had, for a brief second, begun to beat. Not only that, but it had also absorbed mana for a while. This unexpected turn of events left her deep in thought. She wondered how such a thing could be possible. For her entire 200-year existence, she had been ill with a mysterious disease since birth, which caused her heart to stop beating. According to fate, she should have been experiencing seizures and nearing the end of her life. However, to her utter amazement, she was perfectly fine. She found herself in a state of confusion. Then, a realization struck her like a bolt of lightning. Her gaze fell upon the bucket brimming with Seo Jun's special cherries. She grabbed a handful and examined them closely. It was then that she discovered a hidden ability. Consuming these cherries slightly increased one's mana. 
Aileen couldn't contain her joy. She had been eating these cherries purely because they tasted incredibly good, but she hadn't expected that they also possessed the power to heal a dragon's dormant heart. Then she began to smile mischievously, saying, The great black dragon, Aileen Fratani, who was 200 years old, had finally found someone she wanted to smash, she wanted to protect. Even though it was just for a moment, her heart had started beating. Now she was determined to do whatever it took to protect Seojun. She closed her eyes, placing her hands on the crystal ball with pride. She declared that Seojun should feel honored, as it was truly a tremendous blessing that the tower manager liked him, and then she resumed her usual routine of stalking Seojun with her crystal ball. Then, the tower manager urgently tried to wake Seojun up. He slowly opened his eyes, still feeling groggy and sleepy. However, as soon as he saw a system notification right in front of his face, he jolted awake and began shouting in surprise. The tower manager asked Seojun why he had used an unappraised item when she had explicitly warned him about their potential dangers. Still a little disoriented, Seojun was confused about which item the tower manager was referring to. Then he noticed the straw hat on his head. Meanwhile, all his animal companions were still fast asleep, and the husband rabbit had just woken up, rubbing his eyes in confusion. Holding the straw hat in his hands, Seojun couldn't help but wonder how and why Luffy's straw hat had ended up on his head. Then, the husband rabbit approached, holding Theo's bag and explained that he had found the straw hat in Theo's bag. To protect Seojun's face from the direct sunlight, he had placed it on Seojun's head. Seojun started to think if Theo had brought this item, but Theo, in his deep sleep, was nestled in Seojun's hands, covering his face. He wiggled his tail and curled up, making it clear he didn't want to wake up just yet. Left with no other options, Seojun affectionately scolded Theo for being so obsessed with sleeping. He gently placed Theo on the baby bear's soft, furry belly, allowing him to continue his peaceful slumber. Seojun carefully held the straw hat in his hand and decided to check its status window. The name of the straw hat was Farmer's Straw Hat, and it didn't seem to be anything particularly special. Its grade was marked as D. What caught Seojun's attention were the numerous restrictions associated with its use. It required the wearer to be above level 20, with both strength and stamina also needing to be above 20. Upon seeing this, the tower manager suggested that Seojun appraise the straw hat. Seojun, recalling how she had appraised the dagger earlier, asked if she would appraise the hat in a similar manner. The tower manager confirmed that this would indeed be the case. With that assurance, Seojun handed the straw hat over to the tower manager. As soon as it left his hand, the straw hat disappeared and reappeared in the tower manager's hand. She placed the hat proudly on top of the books, preparing to use her appraisal skill. The tower manager initiated her appraisal skill. Her eyes began to glow with a soft blue light, and a similar blue aura enveloped her. At the same time, the straw hat seemed to float in the air, surrounded by this mystical blue aura. As the appraisal process concluded, the tower manager couldn't contain her laughter. She admitted that she knew the hat was special, but its true nature had exceeded her expectations. Now, back to Seo Jun. The system notified Seo Jun that the tower manager had examined the straw hat and was absolutely delighted. She was congratulating Seo Jun for obtaining an exceptional item. Hearing this, Seo Jun fell into a moment of silence, contemplating just how incredible this hat must be. Then, a new quest appeared before Seo Jun. It stated that the tower manager wanted Seo Jun to promise that he would present her with his special, juicy fruit filled with the energy of the blue moon. In return, he would receive the appraised straw hat. However, there was a catch. If Seo Jun declined the offer, he would lose the chance to reclaim the straw hat. Now, deep in thought, Seo Jun realized that the blue moon was just a few days away. He remembered that he had expanded his crop fields which meant he'd have plenty of juicy fruits filled with the energy of the blue moon. So, making the promise to the tower manager seemed like a manageable task. He assured her that he would deliver his special, energy-packed, juicy fruit, as promised. Then, the system alerted Seo Jun that Aileen Fratani, the tower manager, wanted him to hold out his pinky finger and make the promise official. She introduced herself, emphasizing how honored Seo Jun should feel knowing her name. However, Seo Jun, with a touch of humor, jokingly remarked that he wasn't particularly interested in knowing her name in the first place. This comment seemed to irritate the tower manager. She asked Seo Jun whether he wanted his straw hat back or not, her excitement growing as she pounded her feet on the floor. 
She asserted that Seo Jun would eventually realize how fortunate he was to even know her name. Seeing the tower manager growing agitated, Seo Jun quickly adopted a more polite tone. He expressed that it was indeed a great honor to know her name. With respect, he raised his hand and extended his pinky finger, solemnly promising to provide his special juicy fruits to the tower manager when he harvested them during the next blue moon. The tower manager's eyes gleamed with excitement as she responded. She mentioned that this was Seo Jun's first promise to the tower manager. Seo Jun didn't quite understand what she meant, but through her crystal ball, the tower manager, who also raised her pinky claw, saying, Yes, our first promise. And with a loving smile, she continued to gaze at Seo Jun. Then, with a sense of awe, the system notified Seo Jun that the quest had been successfully completed. The straw hat floated gracefully in midair before him. Seo Jun couldn't contain his excitement as he eagerly checked the status of the straw hat. The system revealed astonishing information. This was no ordinary hat. It was one of the ten legendary artifacts known as the straw hat. It was originally worn by a farmer named Patrick, revered as a saint for saving countless lives through his farming. The unique feature of this hat was that its abilities and rank would grow alongside its owner, and only those with the farmer job class could utilize its powers. Seo Jun was left in shock. The term artifact alone implied immense rarity and power, and with only ten of these artifacts in the entire tower, he realized just how precious it was. Without hesitation, driven by excitement, Seo Jun placed the straw hat on his head, eager to discover the incredible abilities it would grant him. As he adorned the hat, a flurry of system notifications appeared before him, revealing that various restrictions had been lifted. New abilities and skills were displayed, including increased strength, enhanced stamina, improved mana recovery and a host of other remarkable capabilities that left Seo Jun feeling truly bewildered with his mouth open. Now, gazing at the rugged terrain above the cave, Seo Jun felt a surge of contentment. His strength and stamina had been limiting his farming progress, but with these newfound powers bestowed by the straw hat, he knew he could significantly accelerate the expansion of his farm. With a warm smile gracing his face, Seo Jun turned to look at Theo. He couldn't help but express his gratitude, acknowledging that Theo truly had the golden touch, since he always seemed to bring good things along. Theo, however, remained blissfully unaware, fast asleep with his mouth agape. Unable to contain his happiness, Seo Jun approached and gently hugged Theo, saying with affection, my lovely and proud sales cat, Theo. He showered Theo's paws with kisses, overcome with joy. At this unexpected display of affection, Theo stirred from his slumber. He seemed a bit bewildered, asking Seo Jun what he was doing with his paws and stating, in a somewhat awkward manner, that he wasn't interested in male human. Seo Jun suddenly jumped to his feet, his excitement evident in his voice as he exclaimed, saying, Theo can be sales cat Theo for a whole week. Theo, taken aback by this unexpected offer, couldn't help but express his surprise. A whole week instead of just 38 hours? He questioned. Seo Jun playfully scooped Theo into the air, his face beaming with happiness. He confirmed with enthusiasm, saying, Yes, and affectionately referred to Theo as a cute bastard. The commotion stirred the baby bear and roused all the rabbits from their slumber. In the midst of this jubilant atmosphere, Theo couldn't contain his joy. He happily responded, He don't know why he is getting this special treatment, but he is really, really happy. The scene takes a sudden shift, and within the cave, the piercing scream of the wife rabbit resonated. It was an unmistakable sign. The wife rabbit had gone into labor. Amidst this tense moment, the chubby rabbit seemed quite unfazed, casually nibbling on a stick. However, the warrior rabbit was a bundle of nerves, clutching his hands tightly and offering prayers. Seo Jun appeared even more nervous, his legs trembling uncontrollably. Clenching his teeth, he struggled to contain his anxiety. Theo, seated on Seo Jun's lap, was becoming increasingly irritated by the constant leg shaking. Annoyed, Theo asked Seo Jun to cease his restless leg movements, expressing that he might go crazy otherwise. Seo Jun, realizing his anxious habit, apologized, explaining that he couldn't help himself due to his nerves. As time ticked by, there was still no news from the wife rabbit. The baby rabbits sat huddled near the cave's entrance, their eyes filled with worry as they anxiously stared at the cave where the rabbit couple had disappeared. Then suddenly, the cave's entrance swung open. Everyone rushed toward it, their hearts pounding with anticipation. Anticipation. From the cave emerged the sickle rabbit, cradling three adorable little baby rabbits. But the surprises didn't end there. Following the sickle rabbit, 
the husband rabbit appeared, holding three more of these precious little ones. Six new baby rabbits had joined Seo Jun's growing family. The baby rabbits were gently laid down on a bed made from onion leaves, and all the rabbits formed a circle around them, their hearts warmed by the sight. Seo Jun, with a caring smile, commented that he needed to prepare a nutritious soup for the mommy rabbit to help her recover her strength. The husband rabbit beamed with happiness at this thoughtful gesture. Observing Theo's hesitance to approach the baby rabbits, Seo Jun encouraged his curious feline friend to come closer and take a look. Theo, with a thoughtful expression, remarked that the baby rabbits were indeed tiny. Seo Jun chuckled and explained that they were small because they were babies, which earned more laughter from the chubby rabbit and the warrior rabbit. Then, Seo Jun playfully addressed Theo as Uncle Theo, which seemed to startle Theo. With a warm smile, Seo Jun elaborated that now that Theo was an uncle, he had to take good care of the baby rabbits and become a cool uncle. This idea excited Theo, and he reached under his cape to retrieve his precious churu treats. He happily offered them to the baby rabbits, proudly declaring himself as Cool Uncle Theo and gifting them his most treasured churu. However, Seo Jun and the other rabbits burst into laughter, explaining that since the babies were still so young, they could only drink their mommy's milk for now. However, Seo Jun teasingly accused Theo of hiding churu treats secretly from him. Nervously, Theo explained that they were meant for emergencies, but since it was a joyous occasion, Seo Jun decided to let it slide. Meanwhile, far from the cave, the scene shifted to get a closer look at the waypoint crystal. Something ominous was happening. A dark creature with large menacing horns and glowing red eyes was commanding a horde of creatures, all possessing fierce horns and muscular body. This menacing creature was none other than the boss of the 99th floor, Demon King Ox. He stood there with a terrifying aura, clutching a massive battle axe, and ordered his minions to attack during the upcoming blue moon, promising them a hearty feast. Back in the cave, Seo Jun was busy picking cherry tomatoes while Theo played with the baby rabbits. Everyone was blissfully enjoying the day, completely unaware of the incoming danger. And so the episode came to an end. What will happen to Seo Jun and his companions? Share your thoughts in the comments and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.